Another day, another tourist up to no good in Singapore. Now I've talked a bit about tourists who have been in the news for doing some weird stuff in Singapore, but recently there was another tourist who got into a bit of hot water for leaving her review about her trip to Singapore that wasn't very positive, and we're going to talk about it today. But before that, don't forget to like and subscribe, it really helps the channel. I mean, you don't have to, but it would be a lot cooler if you did. So it all started with this tourist who posted a video about her trip to Singapore with the caption I'm sorry Singapore, hashtag Singapore, hashtag Singapore TikTok, hashtag travel tips, hashtag the truth. Now I want to know the truth that she's referring to, so let's take a look. After traveling to 33 countries, I would say that Singapore is definitely not on my list of favorites and I'm going to tell you why. Immediately, not a great start. Telling people that Singapore isn't her favorite destination, especially for Singaporeans watching this, it's gonna hurt. But also you can see that she's trying to establish a credibility by saying how she's an avid traveler, so maybe she has some valid points to share. So first off, I'm not sure if it's a me thing, but locals are pretty rude. And we encountered this as soon as we arrived at the airport with the taxi driver. He didn't smile to us, he made me put the luggage in the car. Okay, so a lot to unpack over there in that first thesis statement. So she's saying that locals are rude and she's basing the entire generalized statement on the fact that her taxi driver didn't want to help her with her luggage? Really? I like how she stressed that the taxi driver made her put the luggage in the taxi as if she was forced to do it against her will. Hello? Ah, uh, you got luggage ah? Uh? Yes. I put behind. Oh, by myself. Hana, then what? Wait, so you're making me put my luggage in your taxi? Abu then, you're hearing a problem, is it? Oh, I thought you were gonna help. I got say I want to help, man. Sigina. He made me put the luggage in the car, and the only time he talked was to ask how much money I made. You know, my guess is that the taxi driver was just trying to make some polite small talk, asking her things like, you know, what you do for a living, and then that probably led to questions about her salary, which I think might not have been the most tactful question to ask. But if she wanted a quiet ride, she could have just, you know, kept it short and sweet, looked at the phone to text as if she was busy, or something else to just end the conversation there, because that would be what I would have done. I also feel like I'm not really in Asia when I'm in Singapore because it's super westernized. I don't know if there's a lot of tourists when I went or just a lot of expats living there, but I don't feel like I'm in Asia at all. Now I see, this is a very interesting observation to make and a pretty bold statement if I say so myself, because what do you mean by you don't feel like you're in Asia at all? Were you expecting us to look like a third world country? Hmm? Because I think that Singapore is a tourist destination and is pretty well known for being very modernized and built up. So if this wasn't up to her expectations, then maybe this was a problem with her and not us. You know what I mean? But also if you're going by the places she went to, she was at Lao Pasa, which is in the middle of the central business district. And that's where Singaporeans, non-locals, expats, all people will be working there. So what else are you going to expect? Next biggest thing is that everything here is so expensive. We stayed at Marina Bay Sands and this room alone cost us a fortune. Hold on a second. Those two sentences don't make sense when you line them up next to each other like that. She's saying that Singapore is expensive and then she goes on to stay at one of the most expensive hotels in Singapore. Something's not adding up. I also don't understand why people are obsessed with this hotel and this pool deck. I stayed at so many better hotels that are actually worth paying for. Ah, okay. So now this kind of makes more sense because it seems like her point here that she's trying to make is that in terms of value for money, MBS is just not it. But like her first point that she made about locals being rude, her point, evidence, not linking up. She clearly did not follow the PEL structure here. We even had trouble finding a restaurant that wasn't overpriced and actually had decent food. So we often had to resort to the hawker centers. Okay, fair enough. So she did go on to explore other cheaper, more affordable options at hawker centers. I mean, no one is telling you you have to dine only at expensive places in Singapore because if you're choosing to do that, then that's on you. Can someone also please answer this question, but what do you actually do in Singapore besides eat and shop? Now that is a pretty valid question. I mean, even Singaporeans who have lived here for many, many years would even ask themselves the same thing. I think if you're a tourist here and trying to explore things on a surface level, eating and shopping definitely seems to be the only main activities that you can do here. But definitely if you do your own research and figure out what are the lesser known things to check out, all the hidden gems, you'll definitely find something there. It's just a matter of whether you bother to look or not. The last thing is also that Singapore feels so artificial. Everything is man-made and made for just entertainment. I feel like it's the Las Vegas of Asia, but actually not quite there yet. Ooh, she's gonna piss off a lot of people by saying that. Firstly, saying that Singapore is very artificial is a very loaded statement because you're looking at footage of her going to places like MBS, Gardens by the Bay, which typically, as you would have seen in the footage, are man-made structures which are also artificial, so if those are the only places you visited, then I guess you would make that conclusion. But there's so many other sites to Singapore that are not like this, 
And I guess she didn't venture far out enough. Who knows? And then she says that everything is made for entertainment. I guess it's true if you're visiting touristy spots, they are made for the entertainment of the tourists, like this person herself. So I don't know what's there to complain about because that is essentially serving its purpose, right? Don't get me wrong, their gardens are so pretty and I loved walking through everything. But there's just no natural substance to the country. No natural substance? Ain't not happy go outside settle. Me, you avoid that. But let's see what the people said. Why would you stay at the sands and complain about how expensive it is? It's a you thing. Exactly what I said. Is it just a me thing? But I always never expect taxi drivers to put my luggage in the car for me. Yeah, like I said, if she was looking for a chauffeur, maybe that would be a whole different story altogether. I don't know, we can go on about this. Maybe the taxi driver wasn't in a good mood. We'll never know. When I tried my first grape, it tasted so sour. From then I never eat grape, as all the grape in the world sure taste sour. I mean, that's a great analogy over here. It's not a very wise move to generalize and say that all Singaporeans are rude just because she had a bad experience with a taxi driver who didn't bother to help her, I guess. But yes, points were made about grapes being sour. Everything is so expensive. We stayed at Marina Bay Sands. Well, honey, if you want that instant moment at the rooftop pool, you gotta pay. I mean, facts. That all sounds amazing to me, actually. Yeah, I guess if you like artificial things with no substance, come visit Singapore. I guess one of the other reasons why I think people in the comments were so divided could also be attributed to the fact that she first proclaims to be like an avid traveller, having been to 33 countries, and then coming to a conclusion about Singapore that seems so one-sided, it's pretty unexpected for someone who seems to have travelled many places and would be expected to have an objective view about any tourist destination for that matter. So of course there were plenty of people in the comments that didn't seem to agree with what she said but it was pretty divided based on what I saw because there were others who also came forward in her defence and kind of siding with her too. Same girl, that's exactly how I felt. Finally someone said it, felt the same. So of course this tourist received a lot of heat in the comment section and then she later replied with another video in response. So she replied to the comment that said, why would you stay at the sands and complain about how expensive it is? It's a you thing. So first off, I think you guys are completely misunderstanding my point on the price. If it's a 5 star hotel, I'm obviously gonna know that there are high prices. But that's not what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the value. The price we paid was just not worth it for us. And we didn't only stay at Marina Bay Sands, we stayed at other hotels for the previous nights and a previous trip. Okay, so just as we expected, she's comparing about price point in terms of value for money at different kinds of hotels that she's been to. But I guess all this evidence could have been better explained in the first video if she followed the PEL structure. And yes, those are the better options. I would recommend staying there over Marina Bay Sands. But since this hotel is the go-to for Singapore, we wanted to see what the hype was all about. Okay, so if she knew about the price point already, and still wanted to see what the hype was all about, then I guess it's safe to conclude that this is really a you thing. And for a hotel so big, there are thousands of people in it every day, so it will always be crowded everywhere you go. And look at my breakfast, tell me how much you think it's worth, because we paid $50 for it. What, $50 for that? Xiao. Okay, let's break it down. On the table, we have an omelette in the foreground, two blackened strings of what looks like asparagus, and a very sad single cherry tomato. And then you have like a bagel, and what looks like a bowl of oatmeal, some bowl with some sauce in it. I think that looks like butter. And then at the top, you have some bowls of peanuts and other weird condiments. Oh, and not forgetting, she has this like juice drink on the corner. All this for 50 bucks? Yeah, I would be mad. Just go Yakun, get set A. I'm also not saying that I don't like hawker centers. I actually went here a lot of times and I preferred this over anything else because the food was so delicious. Okay, pretty nice things to say about our hawker centers, but also no hawker center slander will be tolerated here at all. Whenever I travel, I don't like to go to the high-end restaurants because I love trying local food instead. Huh, but then we saw you at MBS going to all those expensive places. What is going on? Care to explain? Oh, and I just noticed that she looks to be having off-brand Yakun over here, which, not too bad, close enough. And yes, I had my friend as a local tour guide for all of you guys saying this is a better option. Wow. So she had a tour guide bringing her around all this while. Now that changes everything because what did this tour guide do? He must have done something horribly wrong for her to come to all those conclusions at the beginning. But when I say that there's nothing to do in Singapore besides eat and shop, I actually mean it on this. And there are a lot of other people and locals that agree with me too. Yeah, this one again, like I said, fair enough. Totally agree. It's true to a large extent if you want to answer it in a very GP way. But also it goes down to what kind of itinerary you're going to plan. Because if you're relying on this local tour guide here, who doesn't seem to be very reliable in the first place, then what to do? I'm not saying you shouldn't go to Singapore that I hate it so much. I'm someone who has a positive outlook for every country I visit. I know there are so many good things about this country and the people, but it was just not for me. Okay, positive outlook, sure. Then why not tell us how the Singapore rank among the 33 countries you visited? Give us a number, then we talk. 
I mean, it would be so hilarious if she actually did rank Singapore because that would cause ultimate chaos. And our experience at Marina Bay Sands was just not worth it for us. Service was not good, they didn't know how to handle all of their guests, and everything is so expensive for what it's worth. They're really only trying to get the most money out of you. Wow, okay, so that looks like a laundry list of problems she had with her stay at MBS, which we didn't know of earlier. So maybe her entire first video could have just been about a review about her stay at MBS specifically instead of just making such blanket statements about all of Singapore. But even after responding and making all these clarifications, people in the comments didn't seem too convinced. Next time I visit the casino, I'm gonna complain about all my money disappearing because oh, it's so surprising, totally didn't expect that. Well, that's one way to look at it. You're coming to literally one of the smallest countries in Asia and complaining there's nothing to do, no shit. I'm not sure about this one because even though we're like a tiny red dot, I'm pretty sure there are plenty of interesting things to do depending on where you look. I think the problem is that some people have the misconception that Asia equals poor plus Singapore is in Southeast Asia. Yeah, this goes back to what I said earlier about how she felt Singapore doesn't look like an Asian country and we were too westernized. I guess just go on to Wikipedia and read in advance so you know what to expect and won't be surprised after buying your tickets. Just a suggestion. And again, similar to the comments in the first video, people are pretty divided and some are also siding with her. As a local, I don't even know what else to do apart from shopping and eating. So after a while, these videos started to gain traction and were eventually picked up by the news and there were also other people who shared interesting viewpoints. So the taxi driver represents a whole demographic of Singaporeans. See lah, all because of this one taxi driver don't want to help her with her luggage, now all of us look like rude people. Help lah! Finally, a foreigner that provides a rational perspective of our country. As a local, I 100% agree with everything that she has said. And judging by the number of likes on this comment, I guess you can say that what she said resonated with many people. What else there is to do besides eat and shop? Well, our politicians have affairs. Ooh, emotional damage. Yeah, there have been plenty of current affairs going on. So I guess it's not entirely fair to clown on this tourist because she did bring up some valid points after all. But I guess she could have framed it better by maybe talking about reviewing the places she stayed at instead. And I guess if she's ever looking for some place more affordable than MBS to stay at, she can always try Hotel 81. YOLO Say no no YOLO YOLO You only live once